and welcome to Girl Code Coffee Chat. This month we actually have a super special episode for you um, because we are in person. Indeed, <laughs> the first time ever. <laughs> Which is pretty weird actually. <laughs> yeah, but really we have a more professional setup than ever and we have a very special venue and a very very special guest. So we have Julia with us and um, we're really happy to have you on to talk about all things yeah, developer events and organization. So maybe um, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit so that we can get started? Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, it's super spontaneous, but I um, always <laughs> love to talk about tech events, so I'm, I'm really happy to be here. So yeah, I'm Julia. I am from Hamburg, and I organize um, Women Tech Makers Hamburg and um, GDG Hamburg as well. We do the DevFest, but we also founded another network, the Social Developers Club, where we also host a conference once a year. We do monthly meetups and also workshops for kids and younger like students. Oh, so cool. we get the next generation of devs going. Yeah. You're basically covering all the things. <laughs> <laughs> you don't really? do tech events, you do all the tech events. <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe I have a problem, but I just love the community so much. And sometimes I forget that I actually am a web developer, so I should work sometimes oh, that's, as that's well. Funny. But yeah, um, I feel like the community work gives me like the perfect balance for the job um, to always do something else. Oh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. yeah, it's fun. No, it's really great to have you on. Uh, mm -hmm. We're really excited. And maybe just for context, we're actually at a really big tech yeah. event, right? Yeah. Um, so this is like very meta. <laughs> it is indeed. <laughs> yeah, and we wanted to start talking with you about how did you start organizing events? What was the motivation for doing it? All right. Yes, yeah, so um, I actually kind of stumbled into IT like many <laughs> like of my friends did as well. Uh, so um, I was studying media and I was um, trying to find a community because none of my friends are in tech or none of my family, so I didn't know where to start. I posted uh, some tech-related content on Instagram and I made so many friends online. I was like, okay, we should meet in person. Like, we should have a cool <laughs> event together. So I got together with my friend Sabrina and we were planning a little kickoff to get to know the community and finally meeting each other like we did today, you know? Like oh, that's really cool. You only have so few opportunities to actually get together in person and that was we were doing this the first time in 2019 so we're like okay let's have some friends and get a little conference style event and I think at the end we were around 100 people a little more so a little it, it escalated yeah. a little. really cool I but mean it was we, really yeah. fun yeah we're like okay so many people are interested and we actually there's a need to get together more and I mean the meetup community was already like evolved and going on. I mean, it was pro -co uh, pre-COVID, so um, everything fine. <laughs> but um, there was not so many events where devs actually got together, not in their niche topics, but, you know, talk like meeting each other, uh, talking more overview topics, getting to know each other, the other areas. So that, would, that was what we wanted to actually do like making more connection across all these platforms, technologies and communities. So that's why we started. That was the motivation. Oh, that's really cool because actually it happens to me that I didn't know any communities more than the frameworks I was Very into, clear. like yeah. Vue or, and actually that made me not learn that much because mm -hmm. everyone was speaking about the thing we already knew. I so know. we were just, yeah, convincing each other that was a great tool without knowing the others. <laughs> uh, what's the point about that? So that's really, exactly. yeah, that's really cool that you started that um, kind of events for exactly. So brother. I think the most innovation happens exactly at the like, edges of the technologies and where we meet each other and getting together because technology or the frameworks or languages they never like are stand alone by themselves they always need to be implemented somewhere in or in a societal context or another like business context so it's always fun to get to know like the other people as well and not mm -hmm. only communicating through code you know yeah, yeah. and it keeps you curious as exactly, well right yeah. like because i feel like we we're in tunnel vision and it's so easy to forget how much other cool stuff is out there yeah um do you have any examples of topics that were covered in the past like i think there was something about automated driving or like yeah, yeah. so um I just love to put technology in 
the context where it's actually needed or built or so like in a society mm -hmm. area, you know, but because tech is everywhere and usually at tech events, we only talk about like how we implemented the code or exactly, but I think it's so interesting to learn like what it does to the communities or what it does like to the people that helps them, for example. So yeah, we did um, the green, oh, yeah, green yeah, tech yeah. event together, yeah, right? Yeah. That was really fun. Um, we also do a lot of accessibility topics um, and you know, how autonomous driving is evolving. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so we always, we love to talk code, but always in the, like that setting, you know, how, how it's used. So yeah, usually we combine topics together. It's like a practical use case where it's not so abstract anymore, right? Because yes. I would like, usually I'm really afraid, oh, I'm not gonna understand enough and maybe I'm gonna feel very stupid. Yeah. Um, and then you go there and it's actually like a lot of context spun around it and the people usually explain it in such a nice way that the threshold is really uh, lowered it's not, it's still complex, but they explain it in such a nice way and that really opens it up and so welcoming. So that's, that's super nice. Yeah, 100%. Also, I think especially for a lot of women, the motivation is different if they first learn why is it implemented or what, like the, the goal behind the technology and then talk about te technology, you know, because mm -hmm. then for me, tech is more or coding in general, more a vehicle to get to something, you know, and I... I'm kind of tired just only talking code, so I was want to have the goal first, like what do we want to achieve? Yeah. And then it's more motivating to actually get into all the tech. Yeah, stuff. totally. Yeah. No, that's really cool. And now we're curious, you have so much, you mentioned all the different kinds of events that you have mm -hmm. been organizing. What are things, if somebody wants to get into it, like where would you start and what are maybe like common mistakes that you could avoid if you knew the hacks behind the scenes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So my best learning actually was that I am really proud that we have actually almost for every event we host 50-50 uh, men and women mm -hmm. attendees, but also on stages. And it came from that I was actually on a lot of women in tech meetups and I was kind of tired of women being on stage only discussing the problems and not actually showing off their skills. And I was like, they actually know really cool stuff and we can put them on like tech related stages and not only being in our little bubble, talking all the problems. I mean, it's super important to do that, right? But um, what we did, we just put more women on stage, but talking their expertise in their like branch or framework or the programming languages. And that um, made so many more women feel comfortable to join. And we didn't have to say it's for women because they felt like it's a safe space anyway because they're I mean I mean we're two founding women so I think that also helped okay. to get more like yeah to make it feel more a safe space but also um just having those role models was so important yeah. for me personally um and that really helped us to fix this gender problem kind of like you usually have on tech events and when you want to get started I would suggest being a little like selfish i think the Ooh. best motivation is to plan events that you are generally interested in mm. oh, so people can actually <laughs> feel your energy and that you're like burned for this topic and then they feel attracted to it as well so yeah and then just start i mean that we started with 100 was way too much <laughs> we didn't expect it but you could just start with getting together in a cafe and just chatting and then maybe Someone will prepare a talk next time, but just let it evolve like naturally. No, that's such a great tip, especially about like doing something where you're passionate about it, because then you don't even care that much if a lot of people show up because you want to listen to that yeah. talk, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, no, that's really cool. And also about like, I feel like a lot of conference organizers sometimes have, or they say they're in trouble finding different kinds of speakers and I'm, I don't want to say they're being lazy, but I think yeah. your event series shows in a way that it is possible. And there's so many knowledgeable women and non-binary folks out there. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of encouraging them, creating a safe space and yeah, like actually actively 
making it possible, lowering the threshold for sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we have so many first time speakers and that's because imposter syndrome is such a thing and they don't even think that they could contribute value to the event. So we always make have to make them go on stage, yeah. you know, and they're like, seriously, me? And then those are the best talks, seriously, because they actually bring the knowledge and not only like the marketing stuff, yeah, you know? not the ego. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, but it's really great. I think that's also a lot of, mm, there's a lot of focus on like big personalities and mm -hmm. that's great. I mean, we all want to go see the super famous people who invented all the frameworks and it's really exciting mm -hmm. and there is so much value in that, but also, the newbies, so to say, they're like, yeah, it's so like, it's a different vibe and there's like, so much Yeah, because there. it's people we can relate to. Yeah. I mean, we wish all to be genius like Eva Jure, yeah. but at yeah. the end of the day, we're just developers outside. So yeah. Yeah. I would like to see people like me in the stage mm -hmm. and people yeah. that are motivated by the things they are doing. And of course, all the pet projects that they do, so cases somewhere because otherwise you just leave it on their internet and no one will see it. So it's nice that you encourage people to go to the stage and explain what they did and how they did it. And actually I'm curious about the process of creating an event, because for me it's kind of a broad thing, mm -hmm. that if I start thinking about it, it's like organizing weddings yeah. <laughs> in my brain, but <laughs> I mean, it will be less uh, scareful than that. <laughs> I feel it's probably kind of the same, you know, because <laughs> everything depends on one day or two days and must come together during that time. Um, yeah, it is a lot and that's why I would also suggest to sm start smaller and what I never did because I'm not the best at documentations <laughs> in my job and also at events, but that's what I would suggest to everyone just like start a to-do list and use that as a backlog for the next event, mm -hmm. you know, because it's all repetitive. So you probably have to do those things again if you want to do it again. So um, just start learning with your first events and then have like a backlog that you can turn into a timeline eventually. And then it make more sense so you don't have like all the pressure and all the to-dos like right before the event when the time is like <laughs> kicking in. But also you can start some processes way early. Because right now you are doing the events for free or do you are getting paid? Or no? no, so it's mostly voluntary work. Okay. I mean, Social Developers Club is a company because we have to like organize with all the other companies. So we have to have a legit like background that they know, okay, if anything happened, they are safe. Like the other companies okay. we work with, the sponsors, for example, um, also to get insurance and stuff. It's, yeah, you have to have some kind of company behind it. Um, yeah, but actually everyone on the team is doing it in their free time and voluntarily. And that's actually a good thing sometimes because they bring so much passion for it. I mean, my goal is it 100% to pay everyone eventually and yeah, also make their work more seen and value, like valued. It is 100% valued, but I also want to like show it and that they actually can, I don't know, we can have a cool trips or something together and I can pay them eventually. But uh, for now, it's all community work. Yeah. It's so important. But it's also like the vibe, right? Like yeah. I, the big events are also fun, but I think the, the mood is so different and the energy, especially at the Social Developers Club, that was like a different thing. And it was it just so beautiful. So it's really, it's Thank worth you. it. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to keep it a little like smaller and yeah. have the, I mean, I want everyone to feel comfortable to join alone and attend alone so because they will 100 percent make friends there yeah so uh, yeah no it's really nice yeah. and there was also like a kids area and yeah. like people could like bring their families and the kids could learn about like code and i, I think they built like little automated thingies yes. yeah yeah and i don't know there was something for everybody it was really Really it was cool. really cool. We have so great partners. For example, the Hacker School, they do a lot of coding workshops with kids. They're so experienced with like from age up. And then for the even younger ones, we had a maker space thing going on so they could do like 3D printing and get like the physical like vibe of all like making and prototyping. And yeah, I think it's um, such a shame that not more events connect like the professional, but also the like personal part like families you always like if you have kids people have to check if there's like babysitters available because sometimes those events are also on the weekends 
um, or after working hours, I would say. And um, I actually like the vibe a lot of there's kids on events. You can tell everyone is like more like open, more respectful to each other anyways. But um, it's also really cute to see them running around with the badges, you know, like, so, <laughs> like really mini developers. It's so cute. Yeah, yeah. it's really nice. Are there any things that you would do differently if you started over uh, organizing events? Are there things that like people could avoid maybe? Um, so I would always make sure if you have sponsors that they have share the same values mm -hmm. as you mm -hmm. and that you 100% make sure what their goals are because like I think so many events just copying other events and not actually asking what their sponsors need. Is it just like branding, employee branding or do they actually need new employees and is your community a good fit for them because it's so disappointing if it's not on both sides because then they're like not getting the most out of the event and we try to just select as little sponsors as possible but really fitting so it doesn't feel so marketed and over like commercialized and that the community also gets a lot out of the partners so they can actually like connect on a like eye level so and I think uh, I see that a lot that um, there's some disappointment that can happen if that's not really checked. So it's really important to check your values as a community, what's important to you and check with not only sponsors, but actually all the partners that they are on the same level and respect your values and community guidelines, for example. Yes, yeah. so that is actually meaningful, right? Like it's yeah. not just, I mean, it's nice to get money, um, not yeah. <laughs> but it's also nice if it's like mutual. Yeah. yeah, and also what you said was so important to get like not only the speakers that are like building all the frameworks and all the like celebrities, um, but actually checking if there are people that could bring actual value and um, that people can learn a lot from. I mean, it's hard people don't do it often to get them to do it. But um, for me, that was the biggest learning just to annoy people that they are ready for giving talks or workshops oh. and just um, trusting them also a lot. Yeah. I was wondering because if I think about values and all the things that you're saying is like similar when you start a company and you need to decide mm -hmm. what your company's values are and things like that. So building at the end a community or organizing events is also like building your own kind of brand. It is. Isn't it? That's why you need to match with the partners or the companies you are aligning with. And it's funny because I guess for you as the community, everyone is a volunteer. Mm -hmm. You at the end partner with education or schools mm -hmm. <laughs> because you said something about hack. A school, isn't it? Hacker school. Yeah, yeah, it's like another. So it's like, yeah. yeah, of course, schools are aligned with your values because at the end you are learning, and that's yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, how to start building a community around learning, of course, with the schools sponsoring the thing. Yeah, didn't thought about. But it's exactly like, like it. you said, like building a brand or a business, even because we last year we got a business coach to like check on our values again and with the whole team we did like a coaching with her so uh, everyone is like on the same page and also having goals to work towards um yeah we finally did this it was forever on our list and it made so much sense it was so fun and really brought us even closer together oh that's really cool yeah it's really beautiful yeah <laughs> and it also like it's, it's something that the team can learn from it brings yeah. you together it makes you work better so yeah no, that's really nice mm -hmm. we're so happy you came on yeah, the podcast yeah. even though it was a very special and very short one yeah. <laughs> i'm sure we could have um talked much longer but it was really nice thank you so much julia thank you so yeah, much thank for you. having thank me thank you for coming it was fun and well as always as every month because this is the first time we are doing it in person but you have every month one streaming with us in twitch and you can find girl code meetup in the meetup page and of course we will be just tuning in the next episode about all things text as always and see you soon